even persuaded me and we bought the same system. <laughs> so we're uh, glad to hear you talk about your experiences with this uh, new stereotactic device. Thank you, Christoph. I also thank you for the title, uh, Upright Stereotactic Interventions. We all have the image in mind, uh, this lady is sitting on a chair, they put the needle in her breast and they collapse. So, uh, it's exactly no, this image. So, but the reality is different. 90% of our interventions we do in a side position, a cubitus position with the system. So they don't collapse. And by the way, Thomas synthesis I showed yesterday, we have an improvement in sensitivity and a significant reduction in recalls. And what we do, uh, before we do an intervention now, uh, we do a tomosynthesis in CC view and also a lateral view. And then we decide which is the best way to go to our target. And we also detect additional lesions. This lady came from the market calcifications, as you see here, and she also has an invasive carcinoma and not detectable in 2D images, but key detectable in tomosynthesis. And this is a system we have. And what are the indications for stereotactic interventions of the breast? It's by its four lesions and five lesions, not detectable in ultrasound. The main group is the microcalcifications, and that you can also do with a stereotactic intervention. It's not a problem. But this one's radial lesions. That's a problematic in stereotactic interventions. As you can also see in this paper from Hyvan Kirchner, in the consensus paper, interdisciplinary paper from 2003. And this relation is now easy to get with a tomosynthesis vacuum assisted biopsy. I show you this case, Mammogram 2007, 2011, follow up. And maybe you see here a slight distortion. Not different over years. If you look at the tomosynthesis, it's different. It's clear it's cancer. So you want to remove it. You do a stereotactic intervention at this time. We thought this is the lesion. And look what happened. We control it with a tomosynthesis. This is our intervention clip, the artifact of it. And this lesion is still there. This is a clip after intervention. And the MR showed us you're totally on the wrong quadrant. This is the area we removed and the cancer. So the lateral position of the breast. So if you look. What have we done before? We have no guidelines for breast homosynthesis in the moment. In 2003, we have guidelines for the MI. Now, new edition. And Lieberman asked, if we do MR, so we should also have possibility to biopsy on MR. And that is exactly what we do now. We have homosynthesis, we found lesions, we cannot detect on ultrasound or on digital mammograms. So the easiest way to biopsy this lesion is to do it with tomosynthesis guided biopsy. Same patient, 2D images, see few reconstructed images, lesion is clearer also on tomosynthesis. You easily detect this lesion. And this lady has a second cancer on the left side not detectable in 2D images, see if you also not but on tomosynthesis, you will get this lesion. A small lesion, how will you remove this lesion if you have no 
biopsy plausibility with trauma synthesis. This is an oblique view of the same patient. Here you get the lesion on the right side, on the C view, easy to detect. Also, a trauma synthesis. This is the left side, not detectable 2D images, but you detect it on a trauma synthesis view. So, this is the image with a needle in, not detectable, this lesion, no way to see it on 2D image. So, what can we do with trauma synthesis? We can select the patient who needs it. We plan our intervention in advance. That's the best way to go for it. And we control easily our biopsy. Example, 2D images not detectable. If you go on Thomas Synthesis, it's clear. It's one centimeter in size. Go back. Here's the lesion. Also, in a easy to detect this radio distortion on Thomas Synthesis. Go back to see few, uh, to T 2D images not detectable, so I cannot biopsy this lesion. We go to MR, and we have a lot of fibroglandular tissue in the dances, so I don't know where is the lesion. Not, not possible for me to biopsy this on MR. I go back to ultrasound, I have two lesions, maybe this one or this one. So I take my chance, put a needle in, and I was happy because I was close to it. I found this lesion with a clip, but this was luck, not more. Now it's easy, 2D images, not detect. The lesion, radial lesion, but in tomosynthesis, easy to detect. It's here. Not detectable. We found this lesion also not an ultrasound. And we look for it really a long time. Stereotactic, no possibility to find this lesion. MRI is not always available. High costs, time consuming. And there are also contraindications. This is a solution. Now it's possible to buy a few lesions. Thomosynthesis shows the target without the tissue overlap from the 2D images. It shows a lot of radial distortions and radial lesions. And we know in advance the distance from the lesion to the skin, also to the detector. So we can plan in advance where we want to go. Is it easier to go on a CC view or on a lateral view? And knowing the accurate depth of a lesion means to know the best access way to the target. And you can plan your inter intervention in advance with a high safety for the patient. You can also say, OK, it's possible or it's not possible in advance. You know it. I show it. This is the image you get before the intervention. First is now compressed. Come on. It works. So you see this radial lesion now? So you put a target on it. You mark this target. You know exactly the position. This is cranial, this is caudal. You know exactly the position of the breast. It's the middle of a breast. Also you can show it in a C software system. It's a needle. The green button is your target. It's a chamber of a needle, so it's easy to remove it in this position. Does we still need pre-fire, post-fire for radial lesions? No, we don't need it because we don't see it. So we have less radiation exposure. Like you can see here, it's, it's not necessary. So you have only two images for radial lesions. One, 
to look at your target, where is it, to mark this target, remove it, put the clip in, and then you control it. And you can easily do it. Look at this. You see this line? And you see also this line here. And you can also check it in the x, y axis. And the set axis is here. So you can easily compare where you are, where you're walking, and if you have removed it. The total biopsy time is 15 minutes. Normally, we need before 25 to 30 minutes for intervention, cell tactic. So it's quick. You can control it if you want, but I think it's not necessary, like we do it after intervention, to look if it's the right position of a clip in two planes. And this had also implementation for your workflow. Previous diagnostic workup was digital mammogram. If something is suspicious, we add a spot view, we add supplemental images. If a lesion persists, we go to an ultrasound. If we find the lesion, we biopsy. If it's not visible, we go for a selective tactic. We can assist the biopsy with all the drawbacks, in my opinion. Now, it's easier. We do a tomosynthesis. If there's a lesion, you have two choices now. You can go for ultrasound guided biopsy if you find a lesion. You do a core biopsy. And especially in small lesions, you have a sampling error. And it's more time consuming to find this lesion. And in many times, if it's a small lesion, four or five millimeter in size, I go now directly to the tomosynthesis guided biopsy. I have a less sampling error, and I win time, but the needle is expensive. That's a drawback. If you look for the biopsy steps, this is what we did before. We do a scout, stereotactic pairs, free fire positioning, stereotactic, forced fire positioning, and also image of a clip. Nowadays, I only do one image to localize the target. If it's a radial lesion, I don't do a free fire stereotactic pair, only for market classification. I do it because if you look at anesthesia, maybe you uh, push the lesion away, so you have to look for it. And I only do a post-final view if it's removed. Now we are able to biopsy lesions only detected with tomosynthesis. That's in the main cases radial lesions, small radial lesions. We can biopsy this lesion in a fewer steps. We have less dose for the patient. We have smaller hematomas because it is really quick and it's easy to handle. And in my opinion, this is soon history. Thank you.